So today let's take a look inside a gas water heater. It's a familiar machine that heats your water using a gas supply. So here you can see the bottom where there is a water in, water out. This is the heating water for those heating elements. There is also a tap water in and out and a gas supply. And of course power because this one also needs power for its operation. Here you can see the control panel with some buttons, LEDs and an LED display. There is some information, it says some water pressure information, the power 24 or 26 kilowatts. That's a lot of power, 91.5%. This is probably efficiency. Some other water pressures, maximum temperature 85 degrees Celsius. The water flow 12 liters per minute and the power 230 volts 50 hertz 85 watts. Some warnings on it and it's made in 2009. Okay, this must be the pressure of the gas supply. I have already taken the main cover off and the heat exchanger cover off. So let's just casually take a look behind the control panel. There is the main controller. And there are all the gaps of it. Here you can see the gas supply going in. So I just took a flashlight and this is the gas in. There is a gas valve. It's an electric valve with a cable going in. And there is the gas going out of the valve and into the burner. Here you can see the burner. In this one the gas is being mixed with the air. Here we can see the high voltage ignition. There are the electrodes and there is some flame sensor probably to sense whether or not the flame has ignited. So it seems like this one doesn't have any fan or blower. It just takes the air out of the room through this mesh and the air goes into this mixer. The air is being mixed with the gas here and being burned. There is the chamber with some heat resistant walls. And this is the heat exchanger. Here you can see the pipes going in and out. The pipe is going five times. Like this, 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 this and this. And basically the water is being heated in this one. And the exhaust goes up into the chimney. There is no fan so the, the air is just flowing naturally because the exhaust is much hotter than the air and so it is lighter than the air and goes naturally up. So it's it takes the air out and naturally sucks the air from the room without any fan or blower. One more detail of the ignition electrodes. Here you can see the spark gap. And this one probably is a flame sensor to recognize whether or not the flame is present. I think so. This black box is probably the high voltage generator for the ignition. This is the electric valve regulating the gas flow. And at the back you can see its motor. Here's the motor. Not sure you can see it. It's really tight inside. There are some electric water valves here. And a lot of pipes, and there is a water pump, and this one looks like another heat exchanger. I'm not sure, but I guess that this heat exchanger heats up just the closed circuit of water. So it has to give out the heat to the tap water in another heat exchanger. I'm not sure, but it seems like this one heats the water for this heating element directly, but the tap water is being heated indirectly via another heat exchanger. 
If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments. There is the water pump. It allows the circulation of the water in the heating elements and the heat exchanger. And it says it actually has two speeds. It has 25 or 2600 RPM and the power is 58 or 83 watts, depending on the power setting. And it looks like a motor with a capacitor. It says 2.6 microfarads, 400 volts. And the mains power supply is 230 volts, 50 hertz. Now let's just casually take a look inside the control unit. We are definitely not supposed to open. And what is there? Some board with, it looks like a switching power supply, some relays. And so, here I can see some interference filter, main tank capacitor, it is 22 microfarads, 400 volts, there is some switching transformer, some switching chip, so there is no discrete transistor, this chip is probably doing the switching, there is 7805, that looks familiar. Don't know what is this. There is a fuse, some filter capacitors for interference suppression, secondary capacitors of the power supply, some microcontrollers, another inductor. Here you can see the relays. There are three of them. They are 8 amps, 250 volts AC, and the coil is not sure, is it 24 volts? Okay, there is the capacitor. I have to take the flashlight. Here you can see the main capacitor in it. The switching chip is... Here you can see the marking if you want to look for the data sheet. Some microcontrollers there. Some 8-pin chip. It looks like EEPROM memory. Down there, some crystals or crystal oscillators. 7805, very familiar thing. A lot of very tiny SMD components. Some TO126K transistor. Another 8 pin chip, not sure what it is. 393, is it an op amp? It probably is. Here you can see the diodes in the bridge rectifier and some power resistor. And that's more or less it. Some connectors which are not used. And there is a lot of connectors with cables going out. A lot of sensors and valves. And pumps. And other cables, and this is the mains in. So that's more or less the entire control board. There is some wiring with label. It says outdoor NTC, tank NTC, E bus. Not sure why tank NTC because this is a tankless unit. It basically just heats the water up as it passes through. There is no tank in it. Another 393 op amp. This is 431. This is probably the 2.5 volt reference. There is some optocoupler for the switching power supply. Here you can see the fuse in a very strange holder. It's nice. This is probably the motor of the electric water valve. So it seems like there is a circuit where the water circulates. It goes through this primary heat exchanger where the water is being heated. And then the water can go into the heating elements in the apartment. Or it can go into this secondary heat exchanger where the tap water is being heated. And this is probably the electric valve which is switching those two circuits. And this secondary heat exchanger or a plate exchanger has a lot of plates and one water is in odd ones and the other water is in the even ones. 
In this one, the heat is being transferred from the circulation system into the tap water. Here you can see it's made out of plates. And at the bottom you can see this valve, which you probably use only at the beginning when you have to fill the circulation system from the tap water. Then you close it and the circuit is closed. So it was interesting to see what's inside a machine you are totally not supposed to take a look inside. And now let's try to reassemble it and test it. So I'm putting the front cover of the chamber back. Now let's take a look through the hole to see what's going on. It's igniting and I can see the flame. It seems to be working well. A little water, a small flame. More water, a bigger flame. So it seems to be working. Just a little bit of vacuum cleaning and that's it. But of course, never try this at home. You are definitely not supposed to do it yourself. So this is Dragon Wild and if I don't blow up, see you in my next videos.